because we lived with my parents for a year while we were building this, and you could hear every step we were taking. And here it's a lot less obvious, which was one of the reasons we went with it. So. Because we were doing sort of the upside down house where potentially future children will be underneath our bedroom and things. We didn't want them to hear every footstep we made. So, so as for the lead process, um, how, how, how was that for you guys? I mean, you, you designed the house from the beginning, you know, with a you know, lead for homes in mind. And as the overall process, um, you know, was it, you know, was it incredibly difficult? Was there just a, a mass amount of paperwork or was it fairly manageable? It wasn't too bad in any way, remember. Like when we met them for the first time, we already designed the house to an extent. And then they told me, you already have a lot of points on it. Like, I didn't even know we were going to do these right away. Because we thought about it, but we thought, what's the point? Because we were in the city of Cincinnati, we cost a lot of money. But then when we realized we weren't that far off, we figured we'd go for it. And then there were just a few things that they started down there, so they knew how to give us a couple extra points. So it's relatively easy to get the house to that point. The paperwork, like I said before, is. A little tedious, but I mean, since I did it myself, it wouldn't be too bad because I can not pay anyone to do it. But it was but a good learning good. experience. Yeah, I did learn a lot, and now I feel like I'm pretty comfortable with it. For future designs, I could design in things that I didn't necessarily know about because I had done that paperwork. So. Gotcha. Now, Andy, you, uh, you, you were the builder for the project, and putting this thing together, you guys have done this, you know, big homes before, and, um, you know, you, you know, was there any uh, incredibly difficult things about, you know, putting a slab like this together? What, what's some of your experience in this area of the house? <laughs> this was the first time we'd done a slab like it. I was probably, the only thing I was a little bit uncertain of, but I think it came out the way, the way, the way we had expected it. Um, you know, we were, it, it's not a conventional floor system, <laughs> as you can see, so, um, and it, and it made it made the process a little bit different the way we framed the home, but you know the way she designed it, it, it actually worked out pretty well. You know, most of the old bearings right down the center of the house, so made it easy enough to bring the machines in here to polish it. And um, you know, there's a few minor things. The handicapped accessible shower. I ended up on the floor with an angle grinder for about two hours one afternoon. <laughs> the floor sloped the way it should, but. Uh, I, it actually came together really well. I mean, it's considering the way it's spanning the entire basement, you know, it's, it's held up. I mean, there's yeah, only one crack. We still only have the one crack that crack. happened within days of the polishing. It apparently so, it's just at a weak spot, and then the sheet that polished was so heavy <laughs> that when it polished, it cracked it, and that's the only crack we have. And I think, I mean, when I was here in the winter, you know, I specifically came in wearing no shoes, waiting to see how it felt. And you're right, I mean, it was always warm. It doesn't have any kind of, I mean, it's it's a nice floor. I would, I would consider doing it again if it was, you know, if somebody who, who was really interested in having it done. I think it definitely gives the house a really, the, the feel that you guys were having. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's for everybody, but I do think it's for people who actually wanted it. Yeah. We're totally happy. Now, the other, the, it was, the floor was finished before most of the interior walls were done. So that was another, I think, challenge was how do you keep a floor? Because a lot of times, you know, the hardwood, they may put it in, but they don't finish it until the end of a project. They polished this floor um, I, I, in the first two months. Yeah, we didn't even have most of the walls break. Yeah. They have big, big grinders. It's all grind. They have you know, grinders that do they it. Polish Just so they're kind of through here doing it before we frame yeah. most of the walls. And then they covered it. Framed even over the top of some of the floor cover. They had big sheets of cardboard. Mm -hmm. yeah. So but just convincing everyone that this is the finished floor, you can't be dropping yeah. hammers on yeah. this. Is, <laughs> there's not hard wood going. Yeah. So look at that. You know, and I think all the workers, once they got it, once they realized that, were, were good about it. I think that's one of the biggest challenges in green building is uh, trying to educate folks on new uh, products and green building techniques that uh, people normally, you know, don't consider. I mean, this is unconventional, but it actually does function well. So, you know, somebody comes in and says, I want the same thing now. I mean, it's just, it's just a change. Yes. I know the siding there is, you can't go outside. All the corrugated metal he had never done, and then the handle siding with the aluminum trim, the aluminum trim right there, and just kind of like, yeah, to turn it to communicate something I've never done either, to get it to look the way I wanted it. Yeah. Luckily, it turned out that way, it's really good. Yeah. There was just a lot of, 
just takes a little more time and education for these folks, uh, you know, for the subcontractors to kind of show them how things need to come together. I mean, so I think, you know, through the early stages of this, you know, sustainable building movement, you know, we're going to have to just, like, do what we're doing right now is just try to educate folks on uh, how and why uh, we do what we do and why it's better. And, uh, I mean, it obviously is better. I mean, a house of this square footage, your energy costs have got to be lower than a house of similar square footage. Star requirements that are standard for, for lead for homes, and uh, um, just check that out. That was a pretty quick inspection. Probably did a blower door test. At the end, we did a blower door. Um, most lead homes, we don't have to do a dust plaster because most lead homes do not have duct work outside of the conditioned area. Mm -hmm. um, if they do, then we'll have to do a duct plaster. Very tight home, no problems there. Um, Energy efficiency permit came in very well. Yeah. Because you had good windows and, and that type of thing. Did a couple site inspections like we normally do to check for flashing and drainage and um, recycling and made it easy. It's 10 minutes from my house, so <laughs> it was easy to get over here for a site inspection. But very easy to work with. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great project. I mean, you know, this is. A, you know the core living area of the house, and then you know back at that end we have uh, you know a guest bedroom and bathroom, uh, an office, a master bedroom, a laundry room, mm -hmm. closet, that sort of thing. And uh, you know if, if if it's okay with you guys, maybe we'll just kind of gravitate back there and talk about some of the features that are back at that end of the home. Yeah, just uh, one one thing to note: stuff that you printed out on index cards and put them in all the rooms. So you know if you see a card like is on the counter back there. That talks about some of the, the lead features and green features that are built into that room. Gotcha. And feel free to grab one of these that Stephanie had printed out that talks about, she printed out enough for everyone, talks about uh, some of the key features that made her home, you know, lead silver certified. So they're actually right on the 